Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so excited that you're joining me tonight. I had to pre-record this video because we have a band concert and I'm the, the band booster treasurer. We're having a bake sale and the whole thing. So I'm not able to be live tonight. I hope that you enjoy this pre-recorded video. I'm really, really, really excited about the card I'm gonna share with you today. I'm going to show you how to make a gatefold box card. And then I have some mail call cards to share with you, some really beautiful cards that I've received in the last two weeks. And if we have some time, I'm gonna show you even really briefly our new kit collection from Stampin' Up. It is the birthday card organizer. And I got mine in the mail and I love it. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was, which is why I wanna make sure to show it to you and share it with you so you can see um, what it looks like and what comes included. But first we're gonna start with this fun fold card. I'm really excited. I'm using the Christmas season and Christmas to remember stamp sets. These are both in the annual catalog. They carried over from last year. They were available in the mini catalog last year and they're continued in the annual catalog. I just love these. We've got some dies that coordinate. These are the Christmas label dies, I think. Did I get that right? seasonal label dies and it comes with different tag shapes as well as dies that cut out the Christmas season stamp set. So you can get all of these in the annual catalog and then as like an extra little treat Stampin' Up! brought back the painted Christmas designer paper and this was also in the mini catalogs catalog last year and it came back. So this is a 12 by 12 designer paper. The imagery coordinates really beautifully with the Christmas season stamp set. We've got some great colors, evening evergreen pear pizzazz, little garden green in here, some real red, cherry cobbler, and soft sea foam. And so we've got some different Christmas foliage, um, some, some pine needles, pine cones. Um, I just love the berries and the holly. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. So this is in the mini catalog and the stamp sets I'm using are in the um, annual catalog. This is the card that we're going to make today. I was inspired by this card from Nancy D. Jellermo and she sent this in for the great big card swap. Isn't this fun? Oh my gosh, I love this box card. It's a gatefold box card and it folds flat. So you can put in like a gift card or something like that and it will fold flat and keep your gift card intact. So sometimes it's known as a gift box or a gift card holder. I'm calling it the gatefold box card and I've created a template um, Nancy, I thought you sent me the, um, the link, but I couldn't find your message. Um, so I just gently pulled apart the card as I, <laughs> as I'm known to do, and I created a template and then I put the card back together. So you don't even know I tear it apart. Uh, I will have the link for this in the video description so you can print this out. I'll also be putting it up on my blog in the next um, few days. So you can look for it there at juliedavison.com. <clears throat> So we're going to make this card. I'm gonna do all the scoring and the cutting and show you all the tips and tricks to create this card. I have a little, um, a little key here in the middle. The black lines are for cutting and the dotted gray lines are for scoring. So I do wanna make note of the cuts that go across here um, and the location of those cuts. Those are very important. The first time I made this card, I made the cuts in the wrong place and it just doesn't work. So I just wanted to point that out while I'm talking about the template. And again, you can find the link for this template in the video description right now. I've done some pre-stamping because I knew that I would need to keep the video on the short end today. So I've done some stamping and die cutting ahead of time. Um, and so actually I don't think I'm going to do any stamping on the video tonight. That's going to be kind of crazy. We're starting with a sheet of cardstock that is eight and a half by 10 inches. So this is almost an entire sheet of cardstock. In fact, we just trimmed off, um, an inch from the end. So we're going to get out the paper trimmer and we're going to do our cutting and scoring on this piece. So, uh, our first score lines are going to be across um, across the length of it. So two, three and a half, six and a half, and eight inches. Oh, 
I had to silence my phone. Okay, hey, quick interruption, quick question. I heard on the radio that it's National M&M Day. Isn't that fun? Tell me about your favorite flavor of M&Ms. Do you like the plain ones or the peanut or the peanut butter or the crispy or the pretzel or the almond or the dark chocolate? I feel like there's so many different kinds of M&M. So leave a comment. Let me know what is your favorite M&M. My personal favorite is peanut butter. I just love anything that is peanut butter and chocolate. It's my favorite combination. All right. We are doing two, three and a half, six and a half and eight inches. So let's open up our paper trimmer and get going on that. I'm using the lighter color blade, that's the scoring blade, and I'm gonna make those scores all the way down to three and a half, six and a half inches, and eight inches. And then I'm going to turn, and we're gonna do the score lines here. So we're going at um, one and a half and seven inches. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you, which way you do this, <laughs> um, so one and a half and seven inches. So essentially you're doing one and a half from the top and the bottom. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of cutting and then we're going to do a little more scoring on the centerpiece. But first let's do our cutting. I like to use a nice big blade. You can also use your paper snips for this. And so we're going to cut on the dark lines. So turning our card stack this way, we can see we're going to cut up and then we're going to cut that corner piece off. And we're going to do this on all four corners. We're going to cut up two segments and cut off the end segment. Cut up two segments and cut off the last segment. All four corners, so I'm just keep going to keep turning it and keep going. Cutting two, I almost cut two segments off, just one, just the end segment. And then cutting from the side up to, so this is all according to that template. The one thing I didn't mark on here that I will say I like to do is to taper, these tabs are gonna kind of fold in for our box. And so I just like to give those a little taper. So I'm just going to cut just like a little sliver off all of the, all four corners. It do, and it doesn't have to be exact. It's just so that it's less bulky when it's folding up. And I always do this when I'm making boxes too. Oh, that one was a little, <laughs> that one was a little, a little more. It really doesn't have to be a whole lot though. Just kind of trying to take off some of the bulk there. Okay, so we've got our, our tapered bits. Now we have uh, the center ones that we need to, um, the center ones that we need to do next. And so my measurement of five inches is five inches from, from the end point. But if you're just measuring in the, in the middle section, the middle section is three inches. So if you're measuring between the score lines, it's one and a half. If you're putting your paper trimmer, if you're putting the cardstock in the paper trimmer, then this edge will line up with five inches. And so I'm just gonna make like a little mark. In fact, I, I'm gonna use the paper trimmer for the track, but I'm actually gonna bring in my bone folder here and just add like a little notch at the top and the bottom, okay? And now from that notch, I'm going to go down to the corner. So I'm lifting up this flap so I can see the track and then I'm gonna put it down. And I'm going from the notch to the corner. And I find I just have more control with the bone folder than with the paper trimming blade. You can absolutely use your paper trimmer blade um, if you feel like you can, if you feel like you can get it. Lighting those up.
Okay, so we're pointing up, and then on the opposite side, we're gonna point down. So I'm gonna do the same thing, lining up those corners with that center mark, and then scoring with the bone folder. Okay, we've got all of our cutting and our scoring done, so I'm gonna move the paper trimmer. So show me, I'll show you, <laughs> I'll show you this one more time. And again, you can find the link in the video description to download and print your own gatefold box card template. All right, so we've got all our score lines. We can see um, how they line up here. So now we're gonna do some folding. So this is gonna be the inside of our card and we're gonna fold this piece in and then this piece back. And it's good to use that bone folder again to get nice good creases. And then same thing on the other side, we're gonna fold in to the center and then back out for our gate fold. And so, fingers crossed, those should meet in the middle. Okay, so this is our gatefold part, and this is our box part. And so these little tabs that we did are going to tuck underneath and glue to either side of the gatefold, and then this folds down. So you can see it's pretty bulky, so we wanna make sure we get nice, good, crisp, um, lines with our bone folder on all those score lines. So it kind of goes up. And then these go back down. And again, these are going to tuck under here. So we want to put tear and tape on the inside of all four corners of our box part. And then we want to do some of the decorating, especially the inside. We want to put that on while the card is flat. So I'm, I've got my piece ready to go. And we're going to put that down. You could still glue it down when it's closed. It's just a lot easier to do it, um, to do it when it's open here. So this piece of white cardstock is two and three quarter inches by five and a quarter. And then the cardstock or the designer paper, got too many pieces running around here. The designer paper for the inside is one by two and three quarters. That's the red piece. And then for the front of the card, which are gonna go here on the sides, and we'll go ahead and glue those down. Um, two, th those two pieces are one and three quarter inches by five and a quarter. I'll have these measurements in the video description for you as well. Okay, so let's glue those down. We're just gonna use our stamp and seal. And then we're going to adhere the sides together on the box and then just decorate the front. Like this card is gonna come together so easy because I had it pre-done <laughs> um, some of these pieces for the front. But you can keep your card really simple like Nancy did. So she just used some designer paper and then had a stamped and punched greeting on the inside or you can really you know, get elaborate and add lots of details. All right, so to put our card together, we're gonna do one side at a time. We're gonna take the tear and tape off and we're going to tuck that you kind of have to like fold it like a box. And so this is, you can see our taper just kind of reduces some of the bulk so that it's not so, um, there's not too much by the, by the folds. Okay, so that's gonna go right square up like that, like a box. I'm gonna come around and do the other side. Okay, so just so you can see how this is coming together and then this is going to go over here so this I mean once you get this scoring down and the cutting it's it's really not a difficult card it's just that 
that scoring that can be a little bit tricky. And then we've pre-scored, we've pre-folded our score line. So this is going to fold up to our gatefold card. And you, again, you can just kind of go over it and make sure you're getting nice, good creases there. And so then for the front, I have some pieces that I've pre-cut and pre-stamped. And so we're going to put, we're going to put them all together. Um, so again, I used the Christmas season stamp set as well as the Christmas to remember stamp set for this card. And everything was die cut using the seasonal label dies. And so we're just going to do some simple layering. So I'm going to add this designer paper piece, which is one by three and three quarters across the front of the label. And so this kind of coordinates with the inside of the card. And then I've got some real red ribbon and I'm going to add that across the front. Now, a little secret I always love when getting ribbon to be in place is just to use a little bit of tear and tape to hold that in place. Then this is going to go across that. In fact, I just want to move this over, I think, a little bit. Um, that's better. I might end up trimming those ends a little bit. I'm going to add some Stampin' Dimensionals for the tag. And then we're going to add our stamped and die cut pieces. And sometimes I find the easiest way to do this is with some glue dots. Um, I just find I have a lot more control over it. So I'm gonna add the glue dot to the stems of the foliage and the berries. And maybe I should have done this. <laughs> Let's see how well I can tuck underneath. Oops, that came up. Mm, the dimensionals are not covering. They're not adhering well to the ribbon, so I'm just going to add a couple more. But that's okay. It gives us a chance to add some of our die cuts. And I just kind of took some inspiration from the designer paper, which has some different leaves and some berries. And so I just kind of added a few of those die cuts and then we'll do the label over the top. And if you want to, then you could add some rhinestones or some other, um, other embellishments. I'm going to just trim, trim the ribbon a bit. And add this to the card front. I guess I need to trim that ribbon just a little bit more. So one thing I will say is you want to be sure with your tag when you're adhering it that you only adhere to one side or the other so that you don't glue the, the card closed. So we're going to use some tear and tape. You could use some Stampin' Dimensionals too if you want here. Uh, but we already have kind of a thick card going, so I'm just going to add some tear and tape just to one side so that, again, the card doesn't get glued closed. I'm going to close the card and then center my label and get some good adherence there. Oh, I'm just noticing it's really hard to see the inside. <laughs> I guess... I guess you can kind of open it um, like that and still see the inside message. So if you want to have a smaller embellishment on the front, then when you open it up, you'll be able to see um, inside your box. But you can put a little gift card in there and write your little message. And it's all closed up and can go flat in the mail. Isn't that fun? That is the gatefold box card. Again, maybe you want to use a slightly smaller embellishment on the front. <laughs> Thank you so much to Nancy DiGelermo for her sample here. She does have a little smaller embellishment on the front so you can still see that inside. I should have thought of that. But I hope you enjoy this card and that you give it a try at home. The gatefold box card template is in the video description. So download that 
and have some fun with it. I would love for you to share your cards in Julie's Stamping Spot Share and Connect group on Facebook and see what you create. I know this is a card that has been around for a while, so I'm, I certainly did not, <laughs> did not invent the card or create it for the first time, but I had some fun. This was the first time that I've created a gatefold box card, and um, I think it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be when I first saw Nancy's card, but like I said, just some simple cutting, simple scoring, and you have a really really wow card. Speaking of wow cards, I want to share with you some cards that I've received in the mail in the last two weeks. We have some beautiful cards to share for our mail call segment. So I'm going to bring those in next. Oh my goodness. I'm doing currently a one for one swap with my team. And so uh, the theme is fall or Halloween. And so I've started receiving some of the cards from team members. So the first few cards are from them. This first one is from Kathy Bradley. I love the colors here with the balmy blue and the crumb cake and very vanilla. I think that is just so beautiful. She's got the leaf fall um, embossing folder for the background. This comes with from the Aspen tree dies and then from the Hello Harvest bundle, wishing you the loveliest day. So beautiful. Next up, same embossing folder. This card is from Margot Richardson and she used sponge daubers to sponge Mary Merlot and crushed curry onto her soft seedling stamp image. So pretty, love the colors here. Parakeet party and then the pumpkin pie gingham paper as well. Beautiful card, Margo. Look at this stunner. This one is from Barb Hopper Price and she used the grassy grove die cut for the trees and then the scary cute stamp set to do the trick or treaters with the moon. Isn't that just so clever? Oh my gosh, I love how it all comes together and you have this dynamic fold. Such an amazing card, Barb. Oh, I'm so happy that I got it. Next up, a swap card from Janice McCollum. This was a, um, a layout that we used in a recent mystery stamping. We do that every month with the team. It's so much fun. We get together on Zoom and we share projects that we've been making. And then we also get to do a mystery stamping project and stamp together live. It's so much fun. Love the little flowers on the inside too, Janice. Thank you for this beauty. I hope that you liked the card that I sent you. Another card from Kathy Bradley. This is using the Apple Harvest bundle and the gingham cottage cottage gingham <laughs> um, designer paper with the big red and white checks in the background such a great card i didn't get this bundle with the detailed die cuts and i'm starting to regret it kathy because you sent me some beautiful cards with the apples well october is my anniversary month and so a few of you sent me anniversary cards and i just want to say thank you linda vanderspool thank you so much for this beauty i love how you sponged the, um, the die cut heart on this embossing folder. And this was a hybrid embossing folder that was available in the January through June mini catalog. Also got a, an anniversary card from Char Cooper using the texture chic on this double flap card. So beautiful with the gold foil accents and that specialty gold paper too. Oh, I cannot wait. I, I wanna do a class with this um, season of chic um, bundle and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and create yet. Look at this stunner. This one's from Sandra DeHart who um, used the stitched rectangle dies to create this one. I just love the angle on this white cardstock. I'm sorry, vanilla cardstock and then the little stamped and punched out um, acorn in the leaves. This card is just so perfect. Just clean and simple and beautiful and the foil on the paper is amazing. Next up a card from Diane Serafin. She sent me uh, this beauty, beautiful card. This month's um, great big card swap. The theme is embossing. And so she sent me this extra little card with a lovely note and she die cut the word blessed and then glued it on the cardstock and ran the whole thing through the embossing folder. And that kind of just helps that um, die cut to sort of be stuck down and it sort of looks embedded um, into the card front. I think that's just really awesome. Diane, thank you so much for that extra card. Speaking of extra cards, we've got an extra one from Judy Kamek who participates in the Great Big Card Swap. This is just gorgeous. My favorite color for the fall is Cajun Craze. And so this card just makes me happy. <laughs> Love the sponging on that embossing folder, the gold embossed leaf and the die cut. It's got like a, oh, I wish you could feel it. It's sort of like this velvet. Um, so there's the embossed die cut with the sponging and the gold and then a velvet die cut back there too. 
Oh my gosh, I just love it. You inspire me, Judy. Thank you so much for your beautiful card. Next up, a card from Vicki Stucky Meyer, another stunner. This is Mary Merlot, the background of the card, which often gets confused with Rich Razzleberry. They're pretty close, but Mary Merlot is a deeper color with like, I would say more red to it. Um, just gorgeous. But that's the color that is in the designer paper. So I love that you picked up on that, Vicki. Beautiful card. And thank you. Thank you. All right. The next set of cards are all doubles from the Great Big Card Swap. So if you were watching on Tuesday, then you saw all these cards. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them um, because I did share them in the other video. But I just want to give a shout out and a special thanks to everybody who sent me doubles. So this one's from Lori Sorrells, from Mary Fudge. Linda Vanderspool, Pat Stewart. Oh, look at this one from Mercy Ermakov with the double slider. Oh my gosh, I haven't done a double slider in a little while, so I'm gonna have to do one again, Mercy. Thank you for the inspiration on this. Oh, here's another fun fold. I'm gonna pause and show you the, um, the measurements. This one is from Kathy Hone, and um, so she's got the instructions here. There's two different pieces. And I call this a box fold card. Let me show it to you. So you're going to untie the ribbon and then it opens up um, like a box. Like if you're packing up a box, you know, to put in storage or to move or whatever, and you, you do one corner at a time and you sort of get that, that box fold. Isn't that fun? Oh, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing that one. I haven't made one like that in a while. Um, next, I have a card from Peg Herrick. Oh, I love this with the cupcake and the black and white. Black and white and pink is just so much fun, isn't it? I love that color combination. Peg, thank you for sharing an extra card for me. More extra cards. This one is from Joe Williams. I love the fussy cutting on the, um, the fern the fern die cuts. And last but not least, this one is from Debbie Popish. And oh my gosh, the colors here are gorgeous. We've got some gorgeous, great parakeet party, um, crushed curry pumpkin pie. I just love the, the sponging and blending on the fall leaf fall embossing folder. And then the scary cute bundle is where the images come from. I think there's stamping on the inside. Let me show you really quick. Um, yeah, oh, little guy there. <laughs> and I'm realizing I forgot to show you the extra cards using the painted Christmas papers. Let me show you some of these. This was the stamp set I just used on that first card um, that we made. So I just wanted to share some extra samples with you. These are cards that I made last year um, using the bundle and the designer paper when it was in the catalog. And then this one is from Heather Peplinski. She sent me that one last year as part of the great big card swap. And so um, I had to hang on to it because it was so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, do you guys love that sweet? I guess it's not a sweet anymore, but the designer paper. I love the look of the watercolored like foliage. This is my kind of like stamp set and images because I don't have to color them. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I know that we've been really short tonight. I'm going to show you this birthday card organizer really quick, but then I've got to get going for our bake sale for the band concert tonight. Okay, this is the newest kit from Stampin' Up. It is called the Birthday Card Organizer. You know, and I'm gonna come up on my camera just a little bit so that I feel like we can't see as well. We're kind of close. Okay, you know what? My stand is not moving, so I'm not gonna come up. But I do wanna show you, this is an eight and a half by 11, um, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. One more time. It's so tight. I can't. Um, maybe I can move. I got a little extra height there. <laughs> not, not a lot. I don't think, I don't think that works like I wanted it to. All right, well, sorry for all the fussing. Um, let's just let's just get into it and show you this kit. Okay, so for reference, this paper is eight and a half by 11. Okay, so the box is almost as big as the paper and the organizer is as big as the box. This kit is so cool. You can get this right now in the online store. I think it's like, I wanna say $25. Um, usually the kits are somewhere between 
um, 20 and 25. Um, so this is the birthday card organizer kit. And it is item number, hmm, it doesn't have the item number on here. I'll put it in the video description for you. This kit includes an organizer to keep track of your birthdays and anniversaries. So there's different pockets where you can put cards when you make them for people. So I was just pulling out some cards today for uh, my sister and brother-in-law's anniversary next month. And my, um, my niece has a birthday on the same month, actually the same day. And so I could put those cards in here and have them ready to send um, next month when that date comes along. So the organizer includes some materials to make. Um, we can make 12 different cards. Is that right? There's... Yes, six each of two different designs, and I'll show you. We'll make we'll make them really quick. Um, but it also has little stickers to stick inside of the planner. So um, Stampin' Up is worldwide, which you probably know, and so we've got some um, stickers in different languages to so that people from all over the world can use these kits. And so that's why there are so many extra stickers when you get your kits. It's to cover all the languages. So the languages we have, oh, you know what I just realized? This is double-sided. Ah! Okay, gentle, 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 gentle. <laughs> um, oh, the languages in the kit um, are English and um, French and German and I think Dutch. Oh, well. This would make such a beautiful gift for Christmas. So if you're already doing some Christmas gift making, some Christmas shopping, you could either get this kit and make it up for someone, writing in, like pre-filling out um, the, the birthdays and anniversaries for family members, or you could give it as a gift for somebody else to complete. Now, the beauty of the kit is that the cards do not require any stamps. Um, so everything you need to create the projects comes inside of the kit. I was going to stop, but I'm almost done. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. But see how easy this is? These are um, self-adhesive die cuts. And so you just stick them on. And as long as you don't stick them in the wrong place, you're good to go. <laughs> All right. So I got my January through February. Isn't this pretty? I love the colors. Petal pink, soft succulent, evening evergreen, and double-sided. Plus we got pockets inside the covers as well. You could gift this with a book of stamps and someone can be all set to go for the new year. This um, kit, just like all our other kit collections, comes with instructions that tell you where to put the adhesive and how to put the cards together. So I'm going to skip the directions because that's what you do when you think you know what you're doing. And I'm going to, well, that's adhesive. Um, I'm going to just do one of each card and we'll see how easy these cards come together. And then if you're interested in getting this kit, you can shop in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. And you can get the birthday card kit organizer as well as um, any of the other kit collections. We have some Christmas cards, Christmas gift tags. There's a really fun um, glitter birthday card kit that is one of my favorite. We've got kits for kind of all, all different things. Um, well, this kit does include some tear and tape adhesive as well as some dimensionals and some glitter um, sequins. I'm going to use my um, stamp and seal instead, uh, but if you don't have stamp and seal at home, you can use that tear and tape adhesive. So let's start with this polka dot one. This is really easy. We're just going to put some adhesive on the back of the triangles and we're going to layer these on the card. And I know sometimes, um, I like I hear some of your feedback that you don't like 
the cards that are like pre-done like this, but I think you could easily just dress up the cards a little bit more and add more to it. If you wanted to make it a little bit more dynamic, you could add um, some punched flowers or stamped images. I like this one though without flowers because I feel like it could be masculine if we wanted to, right? You could send that to a guy. I think in this sample, it does show using some of the adhesive sequins, but if I were going to send this to um, a man, I think I would skip the, um, I think I would skip the sequins and just do it as is. I think that's just a nice, simple card. And um, the thing I love about our card kits, like this is really nice, thick card stock. So I don't feel like I'm, you know, sending out a flimsy card. It's really nice quality. Next up, we have our rose card, and this one, it's almost double-sided, so you can sort of choose if you want. Um, I'm going to go with this side. I like that extra pattern. And so I'm going to add um, the strip of designer paper across the front, right in the center. And then we're going to use some of those Stampin' Dimensionals to add... The big rose. So this one's got four different die cut elements. So I'm going to start with this one in the center. And that's kind of tilted down like this. And then these I'm just going to tuck underneath. And um, since this is kind of on dimension, it sort of creates like um, kind of some fun layering here that we have like this one's raised and this one is flat and, you know, different, different layers and different levels of the card. So then we can add this one up here. Just goes right underneath. And this one up here. That's lovely. And then our little die cut says, it's your day. And so I'm just going to add that right down there. The finishing touch on this card, and we definitely are going to add these little sequins and sparkles. Oh, that really just dresses up the card so nicely. I'm gonna add five on there. So we also have the coordinating envelopes. Aren't those just so cute to have like a little touch of color? So this is the birthday card organizer. Or the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the birthday card organizer kit. And again, you can get this in the online store. I'll have the item number in the video description for you. It comes with the organizer binder itself. And then it also comes with 12 cards or the supplies to make 12 cards. So six of this design and six of this design. You can make them up and give them collectively as a gift. You can even then put them back into that box and package them up nicely. Or um, you could tuck them inside the different pockets of your um, <laughs> of your organizer and have them ready to go. Like I said, I think this would be such a great gift to give to somebody. Um, and you can include some stamps, maybe a newlywed, and you're gonna you can um, make up some address labels for them to send cards and some stamps and sharing those. Um, important family birthdays and anniversaries in there to get them started with their card organizer kits. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't this just so much fun? Well, I've got to wrap up our video for today. I know we only shared one project, but it was a wow, wasn't it? <laughs> I hope that you like that gatefold box card template and the birthday card organizer kit. If you haven't seen that yet, again, that's in my online store, juliedavison.com slash shop with all the other kit collections. Well, thanks again for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel over on YouTube, like and follow me on Facebook, and uh, make sure you come back for more fun videos. Mom and I have got a new video on Sunday at noon central time. That will be on YouTube, so make sure to tune in for Sunday stamping. And then I'm trying to think of what's coming up this week. I don't know. Lots of good stuff. Stick around. <laughs> Have a good night and I'll see you next time. Bye.